Good morning, friends. It's Steve again from Southern Illinois. This past week, we have had our first snow that could be called a snow, but it's gone now and we're back to the land of cold mud. <clears throat> cold, yes, but I have my trusty hat. My wife is a knitter and she knit me my first hat and I just love it. Okay, it's got this fancy cabling down the front and <clears throat> she could tell you all the details. Um, but I'm proud of it and it'll keep me warm here because even though she's inside shivering, she says, why do you do it outside? Well, because I enjoy doing it outside. It makes it feel like we're on an adventure. And speaking of adventure, can you imagine what it would be like to find hidden treasure? I mean, the thrill of the hunt or the shock of unexpected discovery, romance, adventure. All of that happened this summer in the middle of COVID. You see, back in 1988, Forrest Fenn, that was his actual name, Forrest Fenn was facing a diagnosis of cancer. Now, Forrest Fenn was not your conventional man, okay? He was an ex-Vietnam veteran, an Air Force pilot who'd been shot down twice and uh, lived to tell the story. Uh, um, he had gone on to live a life in the model of Indiana Jones, okay? You know, treasure hunter, archaeologist, um, art thief. Uh, he was controversial, colorful, flamboyant. And so when he was facing cancer, his reaction was in character. He thought, wouldn't it be cool to take some of the wealth that I've accumulated, hide it out in the wilderness, and create a treasure hunt for the public? You see, even back in 1988, he was a little bit disillusioned with Americans and their abandonment of the great outdoors. What, and what did he think today in 2020 with us glued to our couch and our, our cell phones uh, instead of going out into the wilderness? So he came up with this idea of a treasure hunt, um, but life was busy. He was fighting cancer and he won. He won. And it took two decades before he finally acted on that dream. But when he did, he did it in a big way. He bought a 12th century bronze chest and he filled it with gold nuggets and rare coins and Aztec, Aztec artifacts and, and all kinds of treasures and he photographed them. And then he took it out into the wilderness, someplace in the Rocky Mountains, north of Santa Fe, any place up to the Canadian border. And then he wrote a book called The Thrill of the Hunt. And in the book, he told stories from his life that were supposed to give you clues as to where the the treasure was hidden. He wrote a poem that, that had nine clues hidden within it. He gave interviews. He started a website, a blog. And by all accounts, his, his attempt at stimulating Americans to get outside was successful. 350,000, that's 350K, people registered on his site as active searchers in his quest. They started their own Facebook fan clubs. They started their own vlogs. There were communities online where you could swap ideas. The hunt was on. And on. And on and on and desperation started to set in 
these 350,000 people trying to find this treasure. They, and yet here, almost a decade had gone, long, gone by and nobody was even close. I mean, the Rocky Mountains are a hard place to get to. Okay, I mean, there are cliffs and valleys. There are places humans probably have never been. And uh, oh, people were getting desperate, okay? Um, and they started doing crazy things, okay? He specifically said in his book and in his interviews, this is not some place where you have to risk your life to go. But instead of listening to him, people were rappelling down thousand foot cliffs to check the cliff face to find out if the treasure was hidden there. And one person fell because he wasn't a trained climber. People started river rafting on whitewater rivers that no professional would go on and they were doing it solo with no experience. All told at least five people died trying to find the, the treasure and then of course the public authorities started getting involved and begging Finn to call off the, the, the treasure quest because people were endangering their lives. Well, Jack was late to the hunt, okay? Jack didn't even hear about the hunt until about 2017, 2018. The, the story's vague. But when he discovered it, he took to it like a duck to water. He was a, a sometime journalist who turned a medical student but was disillusioned with everything medical other than caring for people. And yet he felt trapped into medicine because of all of his student loans. Maybe he could find the treasure and then he would be free. And so he started spending every available free moment digesting the book, meditating on the poem, watching the interviews, reading the vlogs and the, the, going to the, the, uh, the fan sites and anything Fen Quest was his domain. And about two years ago, he identified an area in Wyoming that he was sure was where the treasure was. Now, understand, these 350,000 people, many of them had also identified areas where they were sure this was where the, the treasure was buried. But Jack was sure. And so, so, despite the pressure of medical school, he started taking trips to Wyoming from the East Coast. He spent 25 days total searching foot by foot, every nook, hole, and cranny, lifting logs, turning over boulders, scanning up in trees in the area where he was sure the treasure was found. And he would come out of there bruised and scratched and mosquito bit and sunburn. He twisted his ankles. He fell down. And... Time and time again, he was reduced to tears because behind all of his certainty was the thought, if 350,000 people haven't found this treasure yet, who am I to think that I will? until June 6th, 2020. Jack was back out in the wilderness of Wyoming and there in a cleft in the rocky face of this bluff, he saw the patina of aged bronze and he pulled out the treasure quest. It was there. What would you feel like? What emotion, imagine, what emotions would you feel like? Oh man, think about it. Well, Jack has written about it 
And let, let me just read you some extracts from what he said. The primary emotion was not a Hollywood ending. It was not joy, but rather the most profound relief in my entire life. I felt like I had just survived something and was fortunate to come out the other end. When I got back to my car, I put my hands on the steering wheel and bawled my eyes out. There you have it, friends. A real, true life story of finding hidden treasure. Should we be surprised? I was talking about this with Vivian, and she said, uh, oh man, that reminds me of The Social Dilemma. That's a documentary that's uh, on Netflix right now. Uh, there's a quote in The Social Dilemma. The Social Dilemma is about the, the if, ands, or buts about social media. And they quote Sophocles, who says, Nothing vast enters the life of mortals without a curse. That's a positive thought for you. Viv also thought of John Steinbeck's book, The Pearl. It's a, uh, a long, short story um, talking, telling about a poor fisherman who discovers a beautiful, perfect pearl. And he dreams of all the wonderful changes that are going to happen in his life and in the life of his family. But instead, greed, avarice, jealousy from his neighbors and the town folks ends up destroying his life. His only son is murdered. And in the final scene, the fisherman comes stalking back into town in a white-hot rage with a rifle on his shoulder and nobody dares come towards him because his wife is walking behind him just as enraged and in her arms is their bloody child. And he walks through the town to the harbor and in the sight of everyone takes the pearl out, unfolds uncovers it, holds it up to their view, and then throws it back into the ocean. Those of us who have lived outside of the Western individualistic culture have seen how in a communal culture it is so hard to improve your life because every success carries with it the community expectation of an increase in generosity. I say those of us who have lived outside of the American culture, but have you ever read stories of what happens when people win the lottery? <laughs> we Americans are no different. You get ahead, pull me up. What does all of this have to do with the shoebox? That's our theme. We've talked about Silly Putty. We've talked about living, thinking morally. We've talked about, uh, remember that hacker from last week, Bobby? He talked about his grandfather's maxim, what he wanted to leave to the world. And today, I want to leave you with treasure. You see, one of Jesus' aphorisms, one of his proverbs, went like this. Don't accumulate wealth here on this world because moths will eat it, rust will destroy it, and thieves will break in and steal it. No. Accumulate wealth in heaven where there are no moths, rust can't go, and thieves can't touch the treasure you have there. And here's the punchline. Up until now, this sounds like a nice, meaningless, otherworldly proverb. But then Jesus came to the punchline. 
because where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is. What's the treasure in your shoebox? You take it from there. Here in Southern Illinois, COVID continues to rage. One of the hospitals that we work in had a funeral this week for their ambulance director. They put out a last radio call for him and there was no reply. At other hospitals, nerves are fraying. Doctors, nurses, administration. We've been fighting a battle for a long time and there's no end in sight. It is critical that we be supporting each other, friends. If not now, when? What's in your shoebox? Be safe, be prudent, but above all, look up. I'll see you next week, Lord willing.